Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week by TheBIMGuys.com. My name is Ken Colgan and today we'll be discussing moving buildings in Revit when using BIM 360 cloud work sharing. I know that's a mouthful, but what happens is if you're working in your office, you're able to publish and acquire coordinates from other projects without a problem. When you move to the cloud, you're not able to publish points anymore. You can only acquire. So this kind of throws a wrench in a game if you had a certain workflow that you did in your office. So we're going to take a look at how to use just acquire instead of acquire and publish to reset some points in a project. I'm going to go ahead and close this view and you'll see here we have uh, this project right here. Now this project contains, I'm in building A, the project contains the building here and it's all, all as well. And then I've got a LinkedIn building B, a LinkedIn building C, and also a LinkedIn site. So this is done in many, many different offices where you have multiple buildings being brought to a main site. And then we may also, if I go to file open and I go to, let's say, file open and I go pick on B, you'll notice that B is referencing an A and C in the site also. So we have this kind of cross referencing circle going on and uh, you can see something like that. So if I make a change in C and I save it, any other models that are referencing it will then update, which is a, that's a good workflow. So how do I deal with this now if I need to move the building to a new location because the owner requested it? We're going to take a look at some ways to make this happen. Now, this is a known issue, and it goes back to 2015 or even before when Revit started working in the cloud. I'm going to switch on over to my you know, Google here or my uh, Windows Explorer, and you can see here our Internet Explorer, and you can see here we have the acquired shared coordinates when using Revit Cloud work sharing. And you'll see in here it says, use the acquire command to share coordinates between files in the cloud when the publish command is disabled. And it explains, as you can see here, in about, I don't know, 60 or 70 different commands on how to make this thing happen. It's a lot of work going on here, as you can see. Now, there is a link to another blog we can see here uh, by Steve Stafford. I'll put links below for both of these so you can reference them yourself. And you'll see in here, that this article was written in 2015, back when uh, the collaboration for Revit was coming about. Um, and when it comes in here, he also talks about how the published coordinates um, are not able to be used when you're using the, um, the, the cloud sharing. So it's been around for a while, and there's a couple of ways people have attacked the problem. I'm just going to show you one, uh, kind of a shortcut way, not as many steps as the auto desk that has like a bazillion. Let's go back and take a look. Now this works and you can go through the process and it works just fine. But if I just have to move one building, is there an easier way that I can just make this happen relatively quickly? So yeah, let's take a look now. So I've got my building A and the owner says we want to move the building A over to the other side of the site, maybe over 50 feet and up 55 feet. This is where we want it to be. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and set up kind of two sets of coordinates. What that's going to do is give us the ability to jump between the two. So this is another option if you're setting up uh, sites where you have multiple locations of buildings. And once we have the site set up, we can then toggle between both of them. So let's see how it's done. Now, I'm in the building A. Now, I'm not going to move the building. As I mentioned before, I'm going to move the zero. To do that, I want to go up top, and I want to create multiple, in essence, sheets or sites that I can move the zero around. So I'm going to fire this up. It's called Location, Weather, and Site. When I hit Site, it'll come over here. It says Internal Point. That's what's currently running. It's usually used by a lot of people and it, this is never messed with. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to say this is going to be uh, building A and we're going to say it's going to be in the new north north uh, east corner. Hit OK on that. At this point you'll see it's not current. You see internal is current and then we have this other one. Now I'm going to actually switch it over. I'm saying make it current. So now we're going to be using these this coordinate system. Okay. So this is like a fresh sheet of paper and we're going to set the zero for this new sheet. I hit OK on that. Now, I need a relationship of if this building is going to go over here 55 feet and go up 55 feet or something like that, how, how do I relate these things? The easiest way is you can take, let's say, your site plan. We know that's our zero. We can move the site plan. I'll grab it. I can use the move command. And I'll move it, first of all, maybe over 55 feet this way. 55 feet. Let's see what that does. All right. And now I'm going to move it down. 55 feet. So what I'm doing, I'm actually moving the site opposite of where I want the building. So notice I did not move the building. All my relationships, all my viewports, all my sheets, everything still works beautifully. I just moved the site down. 
Now what you're going to notice here is this is the 0, 0 in this project, right? Okay, that's the one I have in my project right now. And then what I want to do is I want to put a 0 down here. So what I'm going to do is go verify that I am using the new coordinate system. Okay, notice it says northeast current. Perfect. Now, you can use two ways to record this data. Number one is you go up top and you can use the acquire tool, acquire the coordinates, and I can pick the site and it will remember that location. That is option number one. Option number two is to use this here where you specify the coordinates at a point. So you could actually draw lines out and over and then have a point out here and then actually note that as zero. So now being that I move this over 55 and 55, I know that that's where I want my zero to be now. It's up here. So I'm going to use specify coordinates at a point. Now you can use acquire also. Um, I'm going to use specify coordinates at a point. When I come down here and I hover, you see that little dot that shows up and I pick it. Now Revit says currently, you'll notice that the uh, that point happens to be 55 feet away from the original zero and 55 feet away from the original zero. So I'm saying, well, I know it, but that's where I want my zero to be. So zero, zero. So the point I just picked on, it said was minus 55, minus 55, but I'm saying, nope, that is going to be my new zero. I hit OK on that, and it is my new zero. If I hover over it, you see the little point says survey point? That is that element. Okay, so for this piece of paper, that is my new zero, which is pretty cool, because now I just told Revit to set up a new set of points based like so. Now I'm going to go up top, and let's go ahead and hit File Save. So remember here, I didn't manipulate the model at all. I just moved the site plan as a reference. Now I can move it back. I can move the site plan back where I want to. That's not a big deal. Um, but that was used to give me a point. All right. Now, once I've, uh, I did that, I recorded the point and on a different, in essence, sheet of paper or on a different site. So I have a site that is my internal and my building a northeast corner. I'm going to set it back. I'm going to hit make current again. So the internal is current. doesn't really have to be, but I'm going to set it back to how it was. And now I'm going to go ahead and hit file save. Now, in all these other models, this model has already been referenced in already. So I'm going to go ahead and close it. We'll start with the site. I'm going to hit open. And I'll come down here. And I'll pick on my master site. Now I'll pick on the site and I hit open. Now when you open it, you may notice some weird things start to happen. Because since we have multiple zeros, you may see some weird things happening with your A. Especially if you have the points turned on. Okay, so here we are. Now I'm going to come over here and grab this, this element. And you'll see it says not shared. What we have to do is kind of, I'm trying to think of a good word here. We kind of kind of zone them in. We have to actually uh, create the, uh, a relationship between the two, kind of lock them in. And so when I hit not shared, it's going to come up. It's going to say, hey, I've got, a, I've got this point here and the building sitting here. But here's the problem. The building has multiple zeros in it. So Revit's saying, record the selected instance as being at position what? So right now, what position is it at? Well, it is at position internal. Because remember, that's the original point. So I'm going to say that's where it was. So I'm going to leave it and I'm going to say, OK, OK. So what it does, when I hit reconcile, now it says, OK, I know that that point is the internal point. See? But here's where it starts to get cool. I can now go move instance 2 because I've reconciled the point. Move it to building northeast. Now when I hit OK, notice it jumps up to that location. So we have the ability now to say, ah, you know, let's put it back where it originally was. Go back to its original site. Move the instance to. Move it back here. Okay. There we go. Uh, hit OK. So we can pop these back and forth and record position as whatever it needs to be. So. Uh, I'm going to continue to move it. I'm going to leave the building like it is. And notice how I'm able to shit and move it back and forth. So I say move it to here. I hit OK. And it jumps back. So that's given me the full ability to manipulate it. So that was pretty easy. I moved it to its new location in the new model. Now, if we're wondering, I'm going to put a dimension. If I can dimension from that point, let's say to that point, you see it's 55. And from that point to that point, you'll see it's 55. So we move the building in exactly that, that location. Um, the next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and uh, try it on the other ones. Now, I will mention this now. If the site rotates or the building rotates on the site, you may want to use the coordinates, uh, acquire coordinates, because then you're also acquire, acquiring the uh, the rotation. 
So if you are going to rotate it on the site, then you may want to use the acquire, um, the acquire tool. All right, let's go to our next building. So we could save that. I'm just going to go to close out of it. I'm hit no on that. Okay. Let's go open up uh, building. Let's say building maybe C or B. We'll open up B. We hit open. All right, so it comes in. We just have to do the same thing again. We just have to kind of zero out our building. And then we choose the points we want because when it comes in, it doesn't know what we're supposed to be using. It's saying, all right, I'm using what I used before. I'm cool with that. You know, we're all cool. But then when I switch this, it says, okay, um, where are you now? Okay, well, where are you now? So we'll say you are the internal point. And it's like, okay, I'm cool with that. I hit okay. So now it knows where I am. I'm at zero or at the internal original zero. Now I'll say, where I want you to go. I want you to go to new zero move to and you choose the location so you could actually have 10 or 12 different of these in here and jump to the different locations so that moves it to that location so notice we went to a building uh, this different model and we're able to do it now if we just go ahead and hit file save that's fine file save now I did have the points on so you could see them okay now it says saves the new position back to the link no just say uh, don't save return to position disable shared positioning okay so I've turned that off. Now, if I wanted to come back later on, I close out of this. Let's open it back up. And it's back where it is. Okay. Now, if you want to uh, reset it, I just said forget about all the points and just kind of remember where you were and it stayed there, which is good. But if I needed to go back to it, I'd go through the process again. Okay, so this time record this as where is this? That's actually building here. Now, when I do that, now I've just synced it up where it was because that was building B location. Now I'll go back and I can switch it back to the internal if I needed to. So it's just a way to make that happen to move them back and forth. I didn't want it to keep have to deal with that. So I just disabled that feature and it's, it let the building stay where it was. So that's how we can move buildings around. Um, and even retain the original location if for some reason we need to go back to it. So I hope you enjoyed the tip of the week. If you have any questions or comments, just, you can check us out on the, on the web at thebimguys.com. Thank you.